Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2043. This week we've been celebrating the La Jolla Concorde d'Elegance that takes place April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the beautiful La Jolla Cove. To learn more and purchase tickets, go to LaJollaConcord.com. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm back in San Diego today in my hometown with a very special guest by the name of Angel Hacker. Angel, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Hello, Mark. I am ready. We are full throttle today. Let's do this. Absolutely. Now, today we're going to, instead of press the gas pedal, we're going to twist the wrist because we're talking about motorcycles today, and we'll get into that in a minute, but before I do... I have a question for you. What's one little thing, Angel, that most people may not know about you? Oh, gosh. I mean, may not know about me. Uh, Probably that I'm secretly a flower child hippie (laughs) and that I love yoga. Okay. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. You're a young lady. (laughs) You know, flower child. That was my childhood. You weren't even a a twinkle in anybody's eye back then. So have things finally come back around (laughs) to where there's hippies now? They have for me. Have they? Yeah, they have for me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's um, that, that. I'm actually a little bit of a hippie. Um, I, I love yoga. I practice pretty regularly. Um, I'm pretty spiritual when it comes to that. And uh, I also love jujitsu and surfing and rolling. And uh, and then I also love weightlifting. Um, so, so most people know the weightlifting part that I'm pretty adamant about. But um, I don't think a lot of people realize just how how much of a kind of low-key hippie I really am at heart. <laughs> so bell bottoms and tie-dye t-shirts? Eh, if I could, yes. <laughs> if yes, I could. If I could. I settle, yeah, I settle for the tie-dye shirts on the weekends. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll find me in Ocean Beach most Sundays and Mondays. <laughs> OB, yeah, I used to surf down there. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah, by the pier. Yeah, uh, yeah you know. favorite. My daughter the other day had a sweatshirt on that was tie-dye. And he said, oh, my gosh, Paige, that's like bringing back my youth. And she's looking at me like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about, Dad? And I said, I used to make tie-dye shirts and sell them at the beach when I was a kid to all my friends. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, way back in the day. Very cool. So flower power. Yeah. All right. Groovy, mm-hmm. baby. All that good stuff. So, well, we'll have some fun talking about what you're doing today in your real job outside of being a hippie flower child. Yeah. (laughs) Angela Hacker is the general manager of Indian Motorcycle of San Diego. They are the motorcycle sponsor for the La Jolla Concours de Elegance. Mm -hmm. Their dealership was voted best motorcycle shop in San Diego by Reader in 2020. They offer a full line of iconic Indian brand, both new and used, along with rentals, financing, and exceptional service maintenance parts and accessories of course indian motorcycle is one of the most iconic motorcycle manufacturers in the united states it was founded back in 1901 by a farmer named george henderson who raced bicycles with george strapped a motor on his bike frame and well the rest is history climb on a contemporary indian motorcycle and you'll feel the power and attitude that comes with being one of the most legendary motorcycles on the planet we'll be back in just a minute to learn more about indian motorcycle and angels and maybe flower power and all that stuff. But first, a word from our valued (laughs) sponsors. So give them a little love and we'll be right back. Covercraft's newest five-layer indoor cover is especially engineered for indoor use, providing maximum dust protection when your vehicle's stored in the garage. Your five-layer indoor cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form, and fit with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. Even if your vehicle is always inside, dust and fallout can damage the paint and an extra layer of soft, Breathable material protects from accidental bumps and rubs. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Every one of my vehicles is protected with a Covercraft cover, custom fit to fit the car like a glove. And I have a deal for you. If you use the code YEAH21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your order plus 
free shipping. That's right. 10% off and free shipping. Simply use the code YEAH, Y-E-A-H-2-1 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was tired of my rates for my collector car insurance going up every year for no explainable reason. My carrier seemed to be turning into a media company versus an insurance company. And I realized that a portion of my policy premium was paying for all those so-called free media goodies. So I did my homework. I talked to knowledgeable collectors, shopped around and discovered American Collectors Insurance. They've been serving the collector car hobby since 1976. You last that long by properly serving your customers' insurance need, not with a lot of fluff. ACI is ranked the number one online collector car insurance provider according to Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, and they offer their real person guarantee live support. No never-ending phone loops when you need help. Plus, because you don't use your classic car as a daily driver, you could save up to 40% compared to regular auto insurance. American Collectors Insurance provides agreed value policies. So if you experience a total loss to your collector vehicle or it's stolen, you'll be paid the amount listed on your declaration page, less any deductibles, of course. No ifs, ands, or buts. Give them a call today and ask for your free quote at 866-A-C-I-Y-E-A-H. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens, at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. So, Angel, we are back. So I want to dive in a little little deeper into your world of motorcycles. Now, we had a great pre-show chat. You grew up in Tucson, Arizona, out in the desert, doing three-wheelers, four-wheelers, two wheels. Uh, Is that where this whole passion started for you before you migrated west to the coast and started working at Indian of San Diego? Yeah, I mean, without a doubt. Um, And I think that's probably true for most people that are in the power sports industry is that starts when you're a kid, right? Uh, You just, you get hooked on doing the off-roading with the family and the friends um, long before side-by-sides were the rage that they are now. Everyone had ATVs and dirt bikes and uh, that was kind of our family time. And growing up in Arizona, you know, we didn't have the beach. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of those activities that others do here in California. Um, It it was all about off-roading and riding our BMX bikes and building little dirt ramps. And of (laughs) course, it's just the never-ending struggle to go faster, right? So (laughs) BMX bikes became dirt bikes and dirt bikes became quads. And uh, then somewhere along the line, you know, we got cars and Um, there was just this kind of moment after I had my first couple of cars that I was really missing riding. Uh, I I really missed the freedom of being able to jump on my ATV or jump on my bike and just go wherever I wanted to go. So I started looking into getting a street bike. It was something I always wanted to do growing up and always had a dream of. Uh, I'll never forget the very first sport bike I saw that I fell in love with. It was an old Kawasaki ZX6R, um, one of the original like 636s, that oh, yeah. lime green Cowie, oh, just cool. like, bam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just remember looking at that being like, wow, I would love to own one of those. Um, and just that image of that bike stuck in my head from that moment on. And I went and took my motorcycle endorsement. Um, I had some friends that all rode, and I just happened to have a buddy that was selling his bike. And I bought my very first street bike was a GSXR 750. That was way too big of a bike. I was going to say me. that's that's a big <laughs> bike. Yeah, fast bike. Yeah, super powerful bike. Super out of my league, and you know, <laughs> me and that bike went through uh, a relationship together, and I, I went through the struggles of having a bike that was a little too powerful for me, and I also went through the struggles of you know making sure that I had appropriate gear, um, and it all proved to make me the rider that I am today, and I absolutely loved that bike. It's probably still one of my favorite motorcycles to this day. I've actually gone on to own three more GSXR 750s. <laughs> Um, in different years, uh, and now I'm slowed way down. So I'm low and slow now. <laughs> yeah, low <We're>, and slow. <laughs> well, well, that's funny. I like that. Low, yeah, and, slow. low and slow. Yes, that's where I am. Sometimes, yeah. What got you out Sometimes. to San Diego and working at Indian? How did that all transfer? 
Yeah, so I was already working in the motorcycle industry for several years. I started selling motorcycles shortly uh, after getting into riding street bikes. I think I was riding street bikes for about two years when I first started selling motorcycles. I was actually a dog trainer before that. Oh, so that really? was kind of an interesting shift. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a big and, shift. Uh, yeah, big shift. Yep. And um, I just dove in and my core values of whenever I go into a new career, it's usually because I want to learn more about that thing. Right. So I was riding street bikes for two years and it just felt like there was an abundance of knowledge that was to be had. And I just felt like I was just barely scratching the surface and I couldn't have been more correct. And by selling them and being in the industry and doing it for work, I was in trenched in motorcycle knowledge of all different manufacturers, all different maintenances and specs and different riding styles. I had no idea anything about adventure bikes or, and even side-by-sides at the time were still very new. They were like brand new to the market. They'd only been out for a couple of years. Um, and now, you know, you see these Razor turbos and Mavericks and they're like little miniature trucks, right? <laughs> they're like trophy trucks now. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they've gotten pretty, pretty sophisticated. Yeah. So they're, they're pretty intense now, but, um, what ended up bringing me out to California is I was born and raised in Arizona. I never lived anywhere other than Tucson. And as I just wanted to advance my career and continue on with my career in this industry, it started to become a question of, well, I don't want to just move any old place to advance it. I want to move somewhere that I want to go to. And my husband made a suggestion of, hey, what about San Diego? And I was like, well, I've actually never been to San Diego. So we um, randomly just picked a three-day weekend, packed up, headed out to San Diego, and I immediately fell in love and decided within, you know, 20 minutes of being <laughs> here, this is, this is, where this I is live. the place. Yeah. Yep. This is where I want to live. And uh, I think I'd always associated California with LA, right? And well, you sure. go to LA yeah. and there's all the people, all the traffic. It's just, it's a lot. Uh, and I just, LA was a little too much for me. And then San Diego was all of the parts of California I loved with a little bit more of that hometown feel. So yeah. And uh, my owner, Tim Broadhead, just happened to have a position open that he needed a parts and service manager, which was my kind of background at the time. And uh, it was a perfect pairing. And he hired me the day after we got back from San Diego and we sold our house, sold all of our stuff and packed our bags. And here we are. We've been here for three years now. Jumped on Highway 8 and headed west. So, yeah, there yep, you go. just like that. So let's talk about the Indian brand because this is an interesting brand of motorcycles. It's one of those names that was around for a long time. Then it kind of went away and then it came back. And now it's back with a vengeance. So let's talk about your interpretation of why you love the Indian brand, what it means, and what people could expect when they uh, are have a little interest in it and decide that might be the bike for me because it, it's more than just what I thought it was and it's growing and becoming more even with the different kinds of bikes you've got a lot of variety yeah so I've had an affliction to the Indian motorcycle brand for quite some time I obviously got into the field working with Japanese brands like Kawasaki Yamaha um, you know, Can-Am on the Canadian side with the, the spiders. And I just always loved what Polaris did in the off-road sector. I was like, they just, they did it right. They put so much time and effort into taking customer feedback and putting that into the machines. Um, the ride quality from a sportsman to some other competitor ATVs is just night and day. And I always loved that about Polaris. And the entire time I was thinking, I kind of wish they had an on-road bike. And at the time they had victories and victories were really cool. There was just something that didn't quite like hit home with the victory. Uh, the, the branding just wasn't quite that perfect fit. And in 2011, Polaris purchased all of the rights and logos to Indian Motorcycle and every single ounce of it. And from that moment on, I was like, oh, that's going to be a game changer in the industry. And I want to be a part of that shift uh, because I think that's going to be huge because if they can put that same 
mentality that they have in the off-road world into those street bikes, that's going to be an amazing machine. And I was right. Uh, so the the second that there was an opening available at uh, Indian Motorcycle Tucson, which was actually in the department that I had no experience in. Um, I had been working in sales and internet sales and F&I prior to moving on to Indian. And the position they had open at Indian was actually parts and service. Mm. And I just kind of looked at it like, well, I know this much so far about motorcycles. I can always learn more and I'll give it a shot. And it turns out I actually loved that department. Um, I loved the technical side of things. I really enjoyed the accessories and helping people design and customize and set up their bike to fit them perfectly kind of ended up being a great fit for me. And uh, it's it's been wonderful being with the company. I started working with them in 2015, so they launched their first bike in 2014. So I was really on that kind of first year yeah, out the cutting gate. edge. And <laughs> yeah, very cutting edge. So I've got to watch every new model kind of launch. I've got to see how they've evolved and changed each and every year. And um, they're, man, they're hands down a fantastic, very special motorcycle. They're doing some incredible things. And for you listeners that may not be aware, you can go to uh, Indian of SD, Indians of San Diego, and you've got uh, the Pursuit line, which is big touring type bikes, beautiful luxury touring bikes, the Scout Rogue, which is mm-hmm. a sport bike, which is kind of a combination of... Uh, touring but very sporty very swoopy and then you've got like the naked ducati style ftr champion edition which i'm going wait these are all Mm -hmm. indians i mean the diversity in the line is way beyond what my understanding was of what indian is i think of indian as the old traditional you think about victory old traditional type bike indian old street bike touring bike but there's a lot of options with indian Mm -hmm. yeah i think the initial impression of Indian is you see that big balanced fender, maybe like a floating spring seat, springer front end, very heritage, right? Um, Very vintage, which that's the love of the brand. I think that will always have a place with Indian motorcycles because it is part of the heritage of the brand, just like it is for HD. You know, you look at an old 1940s, you know, heritage or a hardtail and it's going to look pretty similar to that. Um, But the brands evolve with with trends and with people's particular style. They want to customize them. Uh, And now your average Harley you see out in the world, like, you know, an all blacked out street glide or the Dyna with the T-bars and a mini ferry, you know, just totally different world, right? Uh, So it's been exciting watching Indian kind of find its personality in a modern world whilst trying to keep that heritage alive and keep that image of themselves in rotation. And I think they've done a really good job of that. Whereas like you look at the roadmaster versus the pursuit, you know, the roadmaster is that very iconic, you know, big freight train inspired front fairing, really rounded and curved saddlebags, really great little chrome accents and trim pieces. You'll notice on any of the Indian models, when you get a chance to kind of dive into them with a fine tooth comb, you find all these little eyes on like brake calipers and um, engine covers. And it's like, wow, like they really did just take the time on each and every little intricate detail of the bike to make it special. Uh, And then you look at the Pursuit, and it is modern everything. The engine's modern. It's liquid-cooled. It has electronic adjustable suspension at the touch of your finger on, like, a 7-inch touchscreen. It's ridiculous. Like, it's out of control (laughs) what that motorcycle is. And, like, sometimes you look at it and, like, is, is this even a motorcycle anymore? Like, I'm pretty sure... It's a car that's open aired. Like they're so impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's um, so it's pretty it's cool. incredible. Yeah, I, I was really shocked at the diversity of line of things. And I understand you guys being the motorcycle sponsor of the La Jolla Concorde Elegance, which is, again is coming up here and later in April. I'm going to be down there for it, of course. I wouldn't miss it. And now that yeah. uh, we're done with the COVID craziness, or most of it at least, it's fun to be back out and doing events. And you guys are going to have a couple bikes there and some people from your store. Are you going to get to be there? 
probably be there at least once or twice throughout the weekend. I know Robert Morgan is actually my rental fleet manager. He's going to be a primary person there running the event. Um, he's my jack of all trades. He's <laughs> been just about every de- every position in the depart uh, in the dealership. Um, he's very well versed, and he runs my rental fleet. So we actually have a full ten. 10- 10 bike rental fleet. Yep. So people are able to take the bikes and really get to know them and enjoy them and make sure they're picking the right bike for them. Yeah. It it adds a little bit more personal journey to shopping for a bike, right? It's not just that same old walking into the dealership, sit on it, get all the specs and then be like, well, this will probably work for my riding needs. And it feels pretty good sitting here on the showroom. We try to provide a little bit more in-depth experience where it's like, no, go ahead and take this bike out, go for a ride out to Josie's hideout in Ramona, (laughs) hang out at a little biker bar out there, have a great ride, maybe go all the way up to Julian. See how you're going to like this bike in an actual real world experience. And what they usually find is that, A, it's it's amazing. And then they're like, okay, this is the one I want. Um, And it gets them to really see the beauty of the bikes, as I like to call out in the wild, right? (laughs) Like when I have a showroom full of Indians, the wow factor is not quite the same. But when you just have an Indian out in the world, you really get to see how special and unique that bike is compared to other V-twins out in the world. Nice. Very cool. Now, Mm -hmm. I have to ask you, I always like to ask my guests if they have a driving inspiration, what I call a influential person, a mentor, or somebody that has helped you along the way and inspired you. Is there somebody like that in your world? Uh, I I have a few different people in my world, um, for sure. I would say one of my biggest inspirations and kind of driving forces is um, my previous general manager of the Tucson dealerships. Um, He's now the regional manager out in Tucson. Uh, Chris Chestnut is a amazing leader and an amazing friend of mine um, and has helped steer me in a lot of the directions that I have in my life now. And his wife is one of my closest best friends. Nice, <laughs> so nice. I thank him forever for introducing me to her because I would, uh, my life will never be the same without having her as one of my best friends. Oh, how and, um, yeah, so I, I really cherish that relationship and where, um, where I've gone with and taken some of those challenging conversations, right? Like sometimes it's not easy <laughs> being a leader uh, and it's not easy trying to manage a me. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I appreciate that from him. And uh, so he's, whenever I have some of those tough days, I kind of sit down and think like, all right, what would Chris do? <laughs> no, Chris, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> run it through that. So nice to have somebody like that mm-hmm. to teach you those things along the way. Well, keep those uh, tough thoughts in mind because when I come back here from a short break, we're going to talk about a big challenge you faced or an obstacle. So keep that in mind and we'll be right back. Auto Geek's Blackfire SiO2 Spray Sealant. It's a spray on, wipe off sealant that's quick, safe, and easy to clean and protect your vehicles. I love using it on all my cars. Auto Geek's Blackfire SiO2 Spray Sealant is a spray-on, wipe-away sealant that uses SiO2 ingredients to provide a slick, brilliant, and long-lasting shine. Silicon dioxide is known to be one of the most effective ingredients in car care products, and Blackfire Spray Sealant takes advantage of every stunning feature it has to offer. This sealant will protect your paint from road film, dirt, and other common contaminants while providing an impeccable, long-lasting, hydrophobic surface that forces water to sheet and bead on your paint for months. Go to autogeek.net to get yours and for the best product selections on the internet today, along with their skilled technical support. Autogeek.net is where I go for all my detailing needs. That's autogeek.net. Check them out today. Did you know that less than 3% of all automotive technicians in the U.S. are women? You may not be surprised, but you should be concerned because our country is facing a massive technician shortage right now. Skilled, qualified techs are in high demand, and we need young men and women to consider these viable career paths. Cars yeah knows that women make great techs. I've interviewed a lot of them, so we support the nonprofit Tech Force Foundation and its Women Tech Rocks initiative to ensure women see themselves in this profession, the industry, 
and the workforce. Learn more at techforce.org today. Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Angel, let's talk about this uh, big challenge, big obstacle, big failure, whatever it could be in your business life, personal life. The more important part of this story should be the lesson it taught you that you could take forward in a very positive way. So take us on a bit of a uh, bumpy ride. Um, Absolutely. I'm a huge believer in that all great things come from something terrible. Okay. Uh, (laughs) All right. um, And not, not in a dark or scary way. I just truly do believe that to to grow in life and to grow in anything, you have to face adversity, Um, whether it's in small little bits of, hey, if you want to have big muscles at the gym, you're going to have to lift more weights. It's just going to be hard. It's going to be heavy. You're going to sweat. You're not going to want to do it. You're going to have to do it over and over and over again and have discipline and consistency. Um, That translates to everything in life. Um, And sometimes the path isn't always so clear, but for all of the bad things that happen there, it's always a happen for you, not to you. Mm. Right. So something that a big life change I had was I actually had a very bad motorcycle accident in 2012. Um, I'd only been selling motorcycles for a few months. I was very new to working in motorcycles and I'd only been riding for a couple of years and I actually was hit by a car and my spine broke. Oh my Um, gosh. And I actually had to have, yeah. uh, So I had to have an emergency spinal fusion of my L3, 4, and 5. And I was almost put into a wheelchair. Wow. Yeah. So um, I was fortunate enough to have wonderful doctors around me and wonderful firefighters and EMTs that knew how to maneuver my body in a way that I didn't sever any of those nerves and there wasn't any more additional damage caused and those surgeons were able to make pretty much bolt my spine back together. So I always joke that I have a superpower spine. Um, <laughs> You're the Terminator. I'm, I'm a little biomechanical now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm wow. a little bit like the Terminator now. I, I have a little bit of titanium in me uh, from, from now on. So anyway, when, when that event happened to me, I was immediately met with a wave of gratitude mm. that I'd never really experienced before. And it was that, I couldn't believe how lucky I was to still be able to walk and that I was even still alive and that I got to be able to continue my life forward. And it was a big eye opener to me of that. There was going to be a lot of struggle to get there. Uh, The recovery process with that is very long. Um, It it took me two years before I got on a motorcycle again, but I did get on a motorcycle again and I ride still to this day. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then I, I also was turned on to, again, something inspired from Chris in Arizona is, uh, David Goggins story. Oh um, yeah. Who's a great book. Yeah. If you're familiar with the great book, if you're familiar with him at all, I, if I could get every person in the world to read it, I probably would. Um, can't hurt me. And same thing, just, just a lot of that, you know, things happen for you, not to you. And whenever, you know, life, life is going to be hard. Hard things are going to happen to you. There's just, there's no way around it. So work on defeating it, work on overcoming it. And there's always that level of, I, I, I can't 
believe the person I am now thanks to, you know, that incident happening. I mean, maybe I would have never got to where I am now if it weren't for that experience. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Great way to look at a tragedy and, and near worse tragedy. So, wow, I'm glad you made it through mm-hmm. that. Well, let's talk about something maybe a little bit more fun, and that would be a special yeah. vehicle in your life. Now, you mentioned some cool bikes you've had, but is there one vehicle that really stands out for you? Uh, you know, that's a hard question. And this is probably a lot of folks in the industry that have been doing it for a number of years probably feel the same way that I do is like, I don't want to have a dream bike anymore. I've (laughs) got to just have bought whatever I wanted and they, I'm just so accessible to everything um, that I don't even know what my next bike is going to be yet at this point in time. Um, We did just pick up a very special bike though. That is a brand new 2022 Indian motorcycle, Jack Daniels edition. Um, So there's only 107 of them made and they, it's a hand paint job. They're all numbered Wow! and they're, they're very, very special, um, beautiful motorcycles. They, they, Indian pairs with Jack Daniels every year for like a special limited edition run of bikes. Mm -hmm. And this last year they released the challenger. So we did purchase that bike and that is in my garage. And that, that's a pretty special motorcycle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be your car psychologist or motorcycle psychologist in your case here. I'm going to crawl into your head a little bit here. So sit back on the couch and think think about this. And I've kind of changed the way that I phrase this. If you were reincarnated, haha, re-bike-ated or manifested as a vehicle, now this isn't what you want to be because we all want to be something sleek and cool and fast. This is more of how you perceive yourself, the lady in the mirror. What would you be, but more importantly, why? So I'm going to say what I want to be, and then I'm going to say what I actually am. Okay. All right. (laughs) That's fine. Uh, And what I want to be is a Dodge Viper because... To this day, hands down, that is my favorite sports car ever made. Oh my gosh, I I just was in one this morning. I was uh, dropping my car off. No! Yeah, and uh, they had one. They had to move one to get a car out. And I said, oh my gosh. And yeah, when he fired that thing up, it blew my toupee off. Uh, Well, if I don't have a toupee, Mm -hmm. but you know what I mean. (laughs) It uh, it kind of, yeah, blew some smoke up my skirt a little bit. I was like, holy cow, I forgot how monstrous these things are. Yeah, with the side pipe, it's whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh, even to this day, if I see one on the road, I, my head follows right <laughs> after it. And I'm like, wow. So that's God, what you, that's what you'd want to be, but what are you really? That's what I want to be. Yeah. Okay. What I really am is like a JK Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am a Jeep Wrangler for all the reasons why I own a Jeep Wrangler, because I am rough and tough. I can't park to save my life. I ride over curbs. I don't park in the lines. I don't follow the lines. <laughs> I like to take the top off. I like to take the doors off. I'm messy. I'm rugged. <laughs> I'm all the things. My uh, Jeep is my dream. Okay. Like, it's it's my true perfect vehicle. There you go. Well, <laughs> you, I tires. like it. I like it. Yeah. You you dug deep into your soul and that, yeah, that's why I asked that question. That's a perfect answer to that. Yeah. We all want to be something Mm -hmm. maybe sleek and shiny and fast, but sometimes we're a little wild, a little crazy, a little topless. So there you go. Yeah. (laughs) Very funny. I love it. That's me. (laughs) (laughs) And I actually own a Jeep Wrangler. Well, that's (laughs) even better. There you go. That, that fits. So I always ask my guests about a great book. You mentioned Goggins book. Is that your, your book to recommend to readers today? Oh, yeah. I mean, without a doubt, um, Can't Hurt Me, David Goggins, um, also Extreme Ownership, um, Jocko Willink oh, is Jock, another yeah, okay, amazing yep. book. Yeah. yeah so and he, I, I'm a big fan of anything in regards to like leadership and structure. Um, another good one is actually a very recently released book that I just read that is from Ryan Holiday called, I want to say the title is Courage? I feel like I'm forgetting a couple parts, but it's by Ryan Holiday. And the, if you if you look up Courage by Ryan Holiday, the book will pop up. And it was a surprisingly fantastic read that I just found in the airport. Um, and the, the cover has a little lion on it. And it just kind of spoke to me. And I was like, hmm, oh, that's the name of the book. Courage is Calling. 
And I was like, huh, I think I need that book. And uh, it's a great book. And it dives into kind of a lot of the same things of, you know, extreme ownership and can't hurt me and tough by Everett is another great book that I highly recommend um, of just pushing yourself and opening up that envelope and really reaching for your potential and just having the courage to do so um, and, and not just sitting back. And I think with the day and age that we're facing right now with the COVID and the shutdown and in politics, and I think everyone's feeling this universal piece of anxiety oh, and gosh. depression and yeah. confusion that you know deep down in your heart there's something that you can do about it and that there's even if it's the littlest bit of courage in just your community and your environment to stand up for people's rights and human rights and what we feel is correct and not necessarily just what we're told is correct right uh i think it's huge it's huge right now you know this are those are all awesome books i just uh dropped my car off with a good buddy of mine who takes care of it pete bristow and this morning and we were talking about that and he's mm. he's trying to help his community because tacoma the which is just over the bridge from here really is having some severe crime issues and um, same with Seattle and even where this little community I live in, we're starting to see some things here. And he was saying, I'm just fed up. Yeah. So I'm I'm taking action. I put groups, business groups together. We go down and meet with the mayor. We meet with the city council and we just say, you guys need to do better. Uh, things are out of yeah. control here. Wake up. Do you see what you are doing and what's happening? And yeah, he just said, you know, I normally just kind of floated through my focus on my business and I didn't get involved in that stuff. And he goes, I just, I have to do it because it's just affecting everybody's lives. So all those books are great books for that kind of thing. So I'm glad that you mentioned those. Awesome reading. So I'm going to mm -hmm. let you go on what I call the ultimate drive. I'm going to buy you any vehicle. You can go anywhere with anybody. And this person could be somebody living or someone from the past who's deceased. So what does that ultimate drive look like for you when money's no object? Because I'm paying for everything. Hmm. Oh, man. How many people choke up when you say they can bring anybody? <laughs> oh, well, I've had some pretty amazing answers, you know, past family, friends they've lost. Um, one person even mentioned riding along with God. So, uh, you know, this, <laughs> yeah, this is a big one. Now, in your case, it could be you want two motorcycles and you're going to go for a ride with somebody. You can do that, too. Yeah, this is wide open. Yeah, this is, this is wide open. Wow. I don't know. I would probably say... I would love to be able to put together a long group ride with myself, my husband, my mom, his brothers, his sisters, um, some of my best friends, some of my work colleagues, and just be able to ride across the country and go <laughs> you're, through the you're experience not a cheap of date, backpacking Angel. <laughs> on a motorcycle. No, no, we're, we're going to need at least like a dozen motorcycles, okay. all Indians. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, this is kind of fun thing about this question because it's wide open and you can have whatever you want. And and that is definitely a unique answer. I've not had an an answer similar to that ever. You know, it's usually a car because we're cars. Yeah, but you know, if it rolls on rubber, I love it. So a big group ride with family and friends on about 12 different Indian bikes. Everyone can pick their own kind of style. I like it. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, that's, um, that's, yeah. that's a very yeah. unique answer to that. Wonderful. Well, you've taken me on a fun ride today, Angel. This is really great. I can't wait to be down at the La Jolla Concorde de Elegance and see some of your bikes out there on display. Now, before I let you go, could you share maybe some words of wisdom, inspirational thought, a quote or a mantra with our listeners today that would inspire them and get them fired up? Uh, I will share with you what I just shared with some other friends very recently uh, on the subject of women riders. Um, and I find it true to be echo across all riders. And that is just don't be scared. Uh, be brave to take that leap. If you want to learn to ride motorcycles, go learn to ride motorcycles. If you want to own a motorcycle, 
go buy a motorcycle. Um, I feel like sometimes motorcycling, maybe a little different than cars, is looked at like this mythical, magical, like you have to have the special talent to be able to operate them and ride them. And the reality is it's not true. Um, I wasn't a good motorcyclist at all. I was terrible. (laughs) Um, And now I would like to say that I'm a pretty decent motorcyclist. But that took time and that took learning. But it all started with just having the bravery to take the class and to listen and to learn. Uh, So that's my biggest thing is just don't be afraid to try something that your heart is telling you you wish you could do. Because if you wish you could do it, you probably could. You darn well can, I'll tell you, that's for sure. And for those of you that want to get into riding bikes, go to your local uh, class course accreditation. Take that course. It will save your life. I promise you. Uh, It is a really important thing to do. If you used to ride Uh and you think you could just jump on a bike and go ride nowadays, uh, you need to take that course. I I did that. I used to ride as a kid and I didn't ride for years and I started riding again. I'm so glad I took it because they taught me things that I was never taught. And almost all of those things they teach you to look out for happen. Uh, Every single one of them. Uh, So be careful out Mm -hmm. there, but go have some fun. How can people learn more uh, about you and about Indian of San Diego? Sure. Uh, You can find me on any social media channel, um, Angel June Hacker, um, Instagram, Facebook. You're always welcome to send me a message and any questions on motorcycle or riding. Uh, I'm happy to answer personally. And then, of course, check us out at the dealership, Indian of SD. Same thing, Instagram, Facebook, IndianVestD.com. Um, shoot us a message. Again, if you ever have any questions at all, whether you're in the California area, the San Diego area, or if you're up in Minnesota or New York, we do not care. Um, we are happy to help wherever you are at. Um, and then, yeah, definitely reach out to your local safety courses for motorcycle riding tips and tricks. And also, um, don't forget about your local tracks. Um, if you're interested in, you know, racing track cars or racing at the track, I guarantee you there is a little community of motorcyclists there and they have great advice for riding and safety and they're a wonderful resource to start with as well yeah great advice i'll put all these links on angel show notes page on the cars yeah website so you just go to cars yeah.com type in angel i think she's the only angel here which is cool angel hacker and you will find everything there check out indian of san diego indian of sd.com and if you're at the la jolla concord which i hope you are i will be there you can check out the bikes they have on display there as well and a big shout out to your colleague Emma Merdovic. Am I saying her last name right? Merdovic? Merdovic? How does she say her last name? Um, now that you said it, I'm going to mess it up. Now that I um, messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let's just say Emma. Oh she, she knows who she is. So a big shout out to Emma. Emma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At Indian of San Diego. She's in charge of their marketing for introducing me to Angel. Thank you, Emma. We'll do better with your last name the next time we're together. Uh, and of course, go to LaJoyaConcord.com to get your tickets and attend this spectacular event. Angel, thank you for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experience experiences with us. This was fun. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you at the La Jolla Concours de Elegance. My pleasure. I will see you there. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!